diameter wire. That's 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. And we'll start off with a little bit of a push angle using just a little bit of gun manipulation. This is kind of like, I don't know, I'm just in the habit of doing this, especially on uh, when I'm using the O30 wire and short circuit MIG. I'm just in the habit of doing a little bit of oscillation like this, a little series of loops. And uh, uh, I may have to get out of that habit, to be honest with you, but it, old habits are kind of hard to break. They say that you really have much room to do much manipulation of the gun here, so oftentimes, you know, something like this, you might just do a straight drag, a straight push, or a little stitch back and forth type motion, forward and back, or forward and pause, I should say. I am not really very good at this. I need some practice on this particular joint here. I think there's a way to set the set the machine with high inductance and, and kind of low wire feed speed to let the bead kind of fan out, but I'm still working on that. Let me show you the finish joint there. You can see a little bit of spatter there. That's typical when you push, unless you turn the wire feed speed up quite a bit higher. There's always lots of discussion on pushing versus pulling, and I think that really comes from because there are so many different modes of transfer. You know, there's spray transfer, short circuit transfer, etc. Pull, but I push also. Just depends on the situation. I've done these kind of tests before. I generally get a little bit better penetration pulling, a little less spatter pulling, but not much difference. Not like night and day. There are subtle, subtle differences in the bead profile and penetration. But we're going to test it and, and show what each one does. All right, that's a series of sort of like U's or cursive E's, and which one you use will determine how much buildup you have in your weld and, and it also affects your travel speed. Like if I'm looping back into the weld like this, that's going to build up a little bit more and that's going to slow down travel speed. Whereas if I don't loop back into the weld at all, I just keep moving forward, that speeds up travel speed and usually you know, spreads the ripples out and doesn't build up as much. All right, just for kicks, because the machine on five wire, you need to set the machine good and hot for overhead, which might be counterintuitive to what some people think. You set it nearly as hot as you would just welding flat or horizontal. All right, here's a joint, a vertical uphill with the O35 wire. Here's a technique I like to use, a little series of overlapping triangles, sort of. And that's just one method. There are several, but that works for me, and it keeps the arc in the front of the puddle and keeps it tracing the front of the puddle and keeps the bead kind of, uh, keeps it from crowning up too much.